and okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome everyone to our session, Get Started with Moodle Cloud Admin with Mary Cooch, Education Manager at Moodle HQ, and myself, Helen Foster, Community Manager at Moodle HQ. Great to have you with us. And in a moment, I'm going to pass over to Mary, who will um, give you a presentation. And whilst the presentation is going through, please feel free to ask any questions about anything you're not sure of, either in the big blue button chat for those of you with us here, or if you're watching this on the live stream in the forum discussion thread. Then once Mary's presentation is finished, we'll have a nice question and answer session and we'll hopefully be able to have time to answer all your questions. Okay, thanks again and over to you, Mary. Thank you, Helen, and welcome everyone. Thanks for the introduction. So uh, as Helen said, I'm going to be presenting some slides introducing you to Moodle Cloud Basic Admin. That It's quite long, uh, but we do want to intersperse it with some questions and answers. And then at the end, anything that we've missed or we haven't covered, we will both of us answer questions then. So you might want, if you like, if you're new to Moodle, you might want to have either a real piece of paper in the old fashioned way in an old fashioned pen or a virtual notebook just to make a few notes because as we go along, we will be giving you some hints and some useful links to websites and documentation and so on. That might help you. So, first of all, I'd just like to ask the people in the big blue button chat here, and um, we already had on our in our room, we already had this question and we got some answers there. Could you please, if you're in this chat, post one or two or three, one if you never use Moodle, two if you hardly ever use Moodle, or three if you regularly use Moodle. Now, those people who are uh, watching the live stream, you can also post, we have a, an activity in our course. When I looked just beforehand, I noticed that there were fewer people who'd never used Moodle, um, and there were a, a few who regularly use Moodle. If you regularly use Moodle, I hope you won't get too bored with this, but you're very welcome to help Helen and me answering the questions. This is for utter and complete beginners in Moodle. I'm seeing a mix of ones and twos and threes here. Okay. And um, so let's get started then. This is for complete beginners. And as all the presentations will be recorded, we are hoping that this might be useful for people who come to Moodle Cloud later on in the year as a, as a quick starter to begin. So it's important to realize that if you never use Moodle, there's actually two sides to using and learning Moodle. There's the administration side, which is where you decide what your Moodle site or your Moodle Cloud site looks like and you bring teachers and students in and you put materials on for them to learn or you set up the place. But then there's the actual teaching. So how can you motivate your students? What sort of activities would they best like? Now today's session, today's beginner session is about the administration side, hence the name, get started with Moodle Cloud Admin. For the teaching side, that's a whole different area so I just want to say that tomorrow, at the same time tomorrow, we're going to be doing a session, get started teaching with Moodle. So you won't be learning or exploring anything about teaching activities here, just how to set up the areas and get students in. So obviously you can't do any of this unless you have a Moodle site. And there's various ways to get a Moodle site. If you are a technical person, you can actually just download it yourself. It is entirely free for the whole world, which is why it makes it the, the best learning management system. Um, if you want, if you want someone else to do the hard work for you, you can pay a Moodle partner, our certified partners, and then they will give you a customized Moodle site depending on what your needs are. However, we are going to focus on the, the very, very quick and easy and up-to-date Moodle Cloud. 
So Moodle Cloud is basically a, a Moodle site made for you by Moodle HQ, so the people who make Moodle. And if you go to MoodleCloud.com, you have various options that you can choose from. Um, you can simply start with a free trial. You just have to give your phone number, it's not used for anything, and then within a couple of minutes, you are given your very own Moodle Cloud site. It's as easy as that. And many, many teachers and other educators in this last few months of COVID have done just that. And what happens when you have signed up and when you've got your link is this. This is the first thing that you see when you click on your new Moodle site. And um, assuming and hoping that you remember the, the administrator name and the password that you set it, that you set up, you then log in. And this is where we've discovered, Helen and I, we've discovered that people who aren't particularly technical or who've never been in charge of a whole learning management system themselves before do tend to struggle a bit, which is why we wanted to do this session. So if we log in, then the first thing you see when you log in, and this is genuinely a brand new Moodle site, is, is this. So on the left-hand side, this is what's known as a navigation drawer. Um, and you have things, for example, uh, a calendar. A dashboard, when you're using your site a bit more, is like a personalized page. And in the center here, I just want to draw your attention. When you first log in, you'll see um, a little uh, course or a page called Introduction to Moodle, which has a few hints and, and links for you if you've never used Moodle before. And uh, we aren't going to look at it. Feel free to look at it if you want to, if you have a Moodle Cloud site. But do be aware that, as it says, it's hidden. And introduction to Moodle is actually greyed out. Um, and so don't try putting teaching materials in there because students won't see it. Only you can see it. But rather than focus on that, we are actually going to take a look at the basic site admin by clicking Site Administration. So when we click this link, which is going to be the most popular link for you, what happens next is, oh my goodness, we get all of these tabs, users, courses, grades, plugin, all of these. Um, Emily, I'm just spotting, perhaps if you, if you can, you might need to maximize, Emily, has typed in the big blue button chat that she can only see my webcam but not to see my screen. So I'm just wondering, Emily, uh, if you might need to maximize the big blue button um, screen sharing. Uh, uh, try bottom, bottom right, there's a little crosshairs icon. Okay, I'll carry on. Thanks, Helen. So um, if this is a bit too much for you, then do note there's a search button here. And if you just type something that you want to know, uh, type it in there, it will take you to some useful places where you'll be able to more easily find it. And of course, we're not going to look at all of these, that will be too much. So we're just going to focus on the absolute minimum of getting started on Moodle Cloud. So I'm going to get you involved again. And people who are in the chat, you might like to type a number. If you're watching the live stream, just think to yourselves in your head, what order do you think would be the best to do this? Supposing you've just got uh, a, a brand new Moodle Cloud site, what do you think you should do first? Do you think, number three, should you make your front page attractive uh, and all the sites, in fact, make it look nice? Do you think, number two, should you get all of the students and possibly teachers on the site? Should you, number one, should you add your teaching materials or is it something that I didn't think of, so I've put a number four? If you're watching the live stream, you think, I'm getting a lot of uh, different ones here. Three, three, two, one, four, quite a mix, actually. Now, it is arguable uh, that number three could be a good one to start with. You want to make your front page attractive. Um, I personally am going to start here by doing it in exactly this order. Number one, number two, number three, um, because I don't see the point of adding the students and teachers until we've actually got some teaching materials for them. 
because yes, you could make your site attractive, number three, but we'll leave that till last because we just want to get started teaching. So how do we do it? Right, well, we can't just start by getting our PowerPoints and our Word documents or whatever it is and putting them on the site and that's it. it. It doesn't work like that. So if you're brand new to Moodle and to Moodle Cloud Admin, the, ne the first thing to realize is that if you've got some teaching materials you want to share with your students, you've got to put them in an area on the site in the in the face-to-face -face world, if you can remember that far back, we used to call it a classroom or a learning space. And the Moodle term is a course. And actually this is can be confusing because I remember when I first started using Moodle in 2006 in a high school, I thought, well, I don't want a course. I just want a place to teach my students. We don't do courses. We have to teach them from September until July, you know. But basically, course can be just a page that you use to share learning materials with learners or students. In fact, in this um, global site, they're actually called rooms, as a matter of fact. And you can, if you want to, order them into categories. So you might, for example, be a languages teacher. And so you would want to have a languages category in which you could have courses in French, Spanish, Chinese. And number four, you might think, well, isn't that a bit obvious? Teachers teach, students learn, I think I know that. This relates to the understanding of what Moodle calls roles, as we'll see a little bit further on. If you have a teacher role in a course, you can add the materials, delete them, modify them. If you have a student role, all you can actually do is just learn, submit your work, join in conversations. So how do we add a course? A course looks like uh, something like this. Now, um, there are many different ways that courses could look, but I wanted to show you this as a fairly typical one. The first thing to notice is that um, it's got a different background. It's got a blue background. That's because, as we'll explore when we do number three, making your site attractive, you can change the way it looks. We've got the navigation draw down there and the bulk of the teaching materials, the teaching content is in the central area there. And then over on the right, at, at will, a teacher can add other blocks. These are called blocks, which add extra information to the course. So that's the kind of thing that you'd be aiming for. And if you're interested in how all of these work, then come to our session tomorrow on getting started with Moodle. It's interesting to look at these boxes. Do you see the tick or check boxes here? These are a useful thing to have activated because they help the teacher and the student to know their progress through a course and what they've completed. So we're going to add one course uh, so that we can put our teaching materials on it. And so we need to go to site administration and then we go to the courses tab and remember, if that's too much to think of, just type it in the search box. And we actually have a few here that say course. So let's take a look at each one at a time here. Right, upload courses. Well, upload courses, you need to know what it means to see whether you want to use it or not. This is where if you've got in your head a list of different courses or subjects you want to put on your Moodle site, you can make them in a spreadsheet. You're basically uploading course information on a spreadsheet, which you save as a CSV file, a text file. And then when you upload it from there, Moodle creates them automatically. That's fine if you're going to have a lot and you save them as a CSV file, but we're just gonna do one. Now, another one to pay attention to is restore course. So restore course, is if you've got a Moodle course, perhaps a colleague gave it to you from another organization. Perhaps you did one of our Learn Moodle Basics MOOC or another Moodle training with a Moodle partner and your takeaway was a Moodle course which you're keen to put on your site. That's where you click to get it, restore course. The next one is add a new course, and that is the simplest way to just make an empty space 
to add your teaching materials. And because we're into Moodle admin, Moodle Cloud admin basics, that's what we'll do. So we click add a new course and we simply fill in the form. It's fairly self-explanatory. And if you get stuck, click the, um, the question mark icons for more help. So we give it a full name and a short name. They can be the same if they're not too long anyway. Scroll down, fill in other details. As we scroll further down, you can give it a description and you can give it an image. The course image, we've got a swan here, note that, will display on the dashboard of people who are enrolled in the course. And sometimes depending also on your front page, however you've got that set up, further down and there are lots of sections which you can click to expand and get more information about. We're not going to go through all of those but I do want to point out that if you're an admin or a teacher on a Moodle Cloud site or any Moodle site at the bottom of your page you'll see Moodle Docs for this page and this is very very useful because if you ever get stuck and you don't know what you're doing then click there and it will take you to some context specific documentation and explanations as to what to do. So assuming we know what we're doing here, um, we click save and display. And we actually go to a place called participants. This here, this is the link in the navigation drawer uh, because Moodle expects us once you've made an empty course, to start adding students or teachers to it, which I'm not quite sure that's a good idea since they would be coming into a completely blank course. But to do it, you can click the Enroll Users button here. Um, we're going to look at this a little bit in more detail later, but what we could do for now is we could actually add ourselves this one single admin on this Moodle Cloud site as a teacher in our very first course. It's not the best way to do it. You're probably better making a completely separate account, but we're going to just add ourselves. Alex Admin is the person on this Moodle Cloud site that they got 10 minutes ago. Uh, give themselves the role of teacher. If you're an individual Moodle Cloud user and you're the only admin, then you could add, a te add yourself as a teacher or make a teacher account because then the course will appear on your dashboard. You'll be able to find it quickly and you'll be notified if students post, in, post messages or submit assignments. So we'll do that for now. And see, Alex Admin is now a teacher in the course. And then it says proceed to course content. Ah, well, we don't have any course content because we've just made the course. And in order to add anything, such as our wonderful PowerPoints or Word documents or videos, we need to turn on the editing. You either do that by clicking the button turn editing on, or in some Moodle versions, and at the moment this is Moodle Cloud, but shortly it will change, you can click this cog icon here, and that also will enable you to turn on the editing. But we're not going to go any further down that route because that is heading into teaching with Moodle. And that's something that we're going to do tomorrow. So we're just going to take a step back now. We've actually made a course where we can add our teaching materials. So we fulfilled number one on the list. So I'm going to add, have a little quick check here. Um, think the answers to yourself. There's no need to type anything in the chat. If you're on watching the live stream, think the answers and I'll show them to you shortly. And if you want to try these yourself, then these activities, they're called H5P, are in the course. So, which link do you press to create one new empty course? And the answer is, you press the link, add a new course, which everyone got, I hope. Next one. Which link, what do you click to upload a course from another Moodle site? So you've done a Moodle training course and they've given you a copy of it and you're keen to put it on your Moodle Cloud site. You need to click Restore Course. And the last one, if you want to bulk upload, so course information, so you've got a list of courses 
and you've put them in a spreadsheet, how would you have to save your file to upload the, that course information? And I did remember to say it, if you were paying attention, and the answer is a CSV file. Okay. So we're moving into the second part now. We've got our learning space. We've got our course. We can add the teaching materials tomorrow. And then assuming we know how to do that, we're going to look at number two, getting your students and teachers onto the site. And this again, and the reason why we wanted to do this session on getting started with Moodle Cloud Admin is because this is something that confuses people very much. Um, you need to understand about roles in Moodle, and then you need to understand about how precisely you can get into a Moodle course. So you could argue that Moodle is very dictatorial because there is one person who can do absolutely everything. That is the administrator. That's you with your Moodle Cloud site. They can also do absolutely everything and delete absolutely everything and cause mayhem. So if you're going to have a colleague who's also going to be the administrator, think very, very carefully about adding an extra admin. It's useful to have one if you go on holiday or something, but um, not too many. Then everyone else is just called, and this is Moodle terminology, an authenticated user. So there's no such thing as actually adding a teacher to the site or adding a student to the site. You don't do that. You add a user who is, when they have an account, they're called authenticated. Then when you go into a course, then you give people roles in courses. So a teacher, and remember we saw that right at the beginning, a teacher, or to be more precise, they're called an editing teacher, is the one that goes in and does the teaching. They can add and modify the teaching materials, they can grade the students, they can see the logs of what they've done. There's also a role called a non-editing teacher, and that's a bit like a classroom assistant. So they can help you grade students, and, but they can't actually change or delete anything. And then if you give someone a student role in a course, then uh, they will submit their work and they can study your materials. So these are only in individual courses. You don't make them throughout the whole site. And before anyone says, yes, you can, but the very, very few reasons why and when you would do that. So let's just have a quick check. Um, I'm going to read it out, this uh, little uh, quiz, which is again, as Helen posted in the chat, these are also available in the course you to try and see as I go through, if you can remember the, the wording. It's actually really important to understand this in Moodle. All new users in Moodle are, they do not have a teacher or student site-wide. You have to add teachers and students to, and think carefully if you want to add another, and I'm just going to show it to you rather than repeating it. There, so authenticated users. You give them roles within a course. If you want another admin, just think carefully because you don't want them to delete all of your hard work. Okay, so now we come on to two key words in terms of getting started with Moodle Cloud Admin. And those two words are authentication, and we heard that in authenticated user, and enrollment. Enrollment spelled with one L if you're British, by the way, so if two Ls if you're American, so it's not a spelling mistake. And um, it's important to understand this in order to know how to get students into courses. I'll just read it out and see those people who know it already. In order for learners to access your courses, they first need an account on your site. And this process is called, well, it's called one of those two. Then they need to be given access to the course or courses they will study in. And this process is called, and both of these are required. So it's a two-step process authentication, getting them onto the site, enrollment, getting them into a course. Now, you can, if you know how to do it, and it's beyond the range of our getting started with admin se session, you can actually do both of those in one 
by doing clever things with a spreadsheet and a CSV file. But we'll just take a look at it one at a time because we just want to keep it simple um, to get started. So we're going to look at authentication, first of all, and that's adding users, as they're called, to the site, just getting them onto the site. Because at the moment in this, which is called my new Moodle site, did you notice we haven't even given it a name yet? All Moodle cloud sites are called my new Moodle site until you actually change their name. In order to add a user, we need to go to the users tab. And then we've got two here that are worth exploring. So we've got add a new user. And that is actually just the same as when we went to add a new course. So it takes you to a, a form that you fill in with the individual details of, of one user, which is very good if you only have a handful of people. But if you've got a long list of people, just like if you have a long list of courses, then you'd go to upload users and fill in their details and upload them with a CSV file, which is exactly what the Moodle tech people here did for the global moot, uploading over a thousand users. We didn't go it one at a time, it was done like that. So let me just have a look at a couple of useful things to know here. If you click the add a new user link, and then you start filling in the details of one individual user, do you notice there's a, a thing here which says generate password and notify user? This is really useful because it basically means that you don't have to then go and email them or telephone them or write them a letter. They will automatically get an email saying, you've got an account, uh, this is your password, log in and so on. So if you're going to do it manually one at a time, tick that box. And you can also force them to change their password once they've logged in. If, on the other hand, you want to add a lot of users in one go in a CSV file and um, you're going to use the upload users, then this is very handy. If you go to that link, there's a, um, a downloadable example of the kind of file you need. So all you have to do is to change the details for the people that you want on your Moodle site. So that's how to do that. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, but all of that's too much work. I've seen, like for example, on Learn Moodle, where people just go and make their own accounts. I don't have to do anything manually as the admin. How can I do that? Or you might be thinking that you've noticed in some sites that you can um, just sign in or create an account with your Google or your Microsoft account. So we'll have a quick look at the, the bare minimum of how you can do those, especially this one, creating a new account, because then you don't have to do the work as the admin. So remember that this is called authentication. So we need to go to our site administration and we go to plugins. Um, it doesn't matter why, but Moodle is, Moodle is modular and it's made up of lots of modules called plugins. Authentication plugins being an example of one. So if we scroll all the way down, we see available authentication plugins. It just means ways of getting users on the site. And I've highlighted two. I've highlighted what's known as email-based self-registration, which is simply the name for people create their own accounts on your site. And um, if they do, you've got to be very careful about pot potential spammers you can have various ways to restrict people by um, captures and so on. So watch you don't get anyone logging into your site, creating an account. When people use this, they will get an email and beware that sometimes that email goes into their junk box or their spam box. So they might need to be explained, have that explained to them. You simply open the eye of email-based self-registration and there are a couple of other settings as well and then they'll be able to create their own accounts. On the other hand, if you want them to log in via Google or Microsoft or Facebook, then you need to enable something called OAuth2. And we're not going to go into detail about it because it's, it's more complex for this session, but it's just to show you that those are the other alternatives. And we're hoping that this beginner session 
will make you want to go and explore some of the other um, options that are available to you. Okay, a quick check. So I'm going to read it out and you can think the answer to yourself. Um, you have to select which of these statements is or are true, uh, and there might be more than one. So if you want people to sign up to your site themselves, this is called email-based self-registration. If you enable this, think about security and spam risks, and your new users will need to confirm their account via an email link. Um, and of course, they're all true. They're all correct. All of those three. Okay, so that's a whistle-stop tour of authentication. So we've got people on the site. Now we need to get them into our course. And this again, this is where we need to understand a bit as what, of what an admin can do. And you are the Moodle Cloud admin and what a teacher in the site can do. So as an administrator, uh, you can bulk enroll teachers and learners or students with a CSV file. We're not going to show you how to do it here, but you can do it. And it's good news if you're going to have lots of students. Even if you have the free trial Moodle Cloud site, you still have enough students there or the possibility of enough students to want to find out how to do that. Alternatively, you as the administrator, you can go into a course and directly through the Enroll Users button, you can add them individually. Now, if you're a teacher in the course, so you don't have these admin rights, but you can, you can enroll students directly into the course. And very important as well, you can let them enroll themselves, which is kind of like the course equivalent of signing up to the site or email-based self-registration. So we're just going to look briefly at those. So if we go back into the course and you remember we were here right at the start, just after we'd made this one course, and there is a link called participants. And if you click the participants link, then you will see the enroll users button. I've got two numbers here, number one and number two. So I'm going to deal with them both. So number one, you might remember that we clicked this one just to enroll ourselves as a teacher, not ideal, but you can do that. So if you click enroll users, then you can enroll any other people who you've made accounts for or who've got accounts on the site. And as an admin, you can enroll them as a student, for example. Okay. Now, the other alternative is if you click where number two is this cog or gear icon, you've got something called enrollment methods. And the reason you might want to go there is so that your students can get, sign themselves into your course so you don't have to do the work. And if you click enrollment methods, you've got self-enrollment and it's grayed out. It's grayed out, that means that it's not available. So you can open its eye. You can actually do other things as well. So other things that you can do is you can click these settings or the little gear icon and you can set an enrollment key, which is a password to the course. So only people with that password or enrollment key can, can enter the course. You can also set a limit to the number of people who can join your course if you've got a course limit, for example. You can add, you can allow guests to access the course by opening that. The few things you need to think about if you're doing that. Um, but that's the way of getting them to get into the course themselves. Okay, here's another quick question for you. And if you want to try this for yourself, it's in the course. So, and this is a good example of an H5P activity because um, it's, it's like a hotspot. So you need to click where you think you'd go to enable self-enrollment. Self-enrollment is when you allow a student to enroll themselves into a course. So would you click number one, the enroll users button, number two to find them here, or number three in this cog or gear icon. And um, hopefully, 
you're thinking and you're hoping that I'm going to click number three, because that is the right answer. Click there, enrollment methods and self-enrollment. Right, so we've actually made a course and we've signed up for tomorrow's Get Started Teaching with Moodle session to create some teaching content. We know how to get students into the course, into the site and into the course. So the only thing left is to have a think about how we can make not only the front page, but the site as a whole more attractive. If you don't think that Moodle Cloud is attractive anyway. And then there's something else. I don't actually have anything for something else. Uh, we're just going to, to answer questions afterwards. So let's take a look. Now, remember when you first log in to your Moodle Cloud site as a new Moodle Cloud admin, first thing you see is that it's called my new Moodle site. So we're going to have to change that. Um, and then the second thing is, why can do you only have the login box? Why can it not be like some of these fancy sites which have lots of attractive things? Well, if you are using Moodle Cloud, one of the restrictions, very few restrictions, but one of them is that you do just have the login box by default. When people have logged in, so when they've got accounts and they signed into your site, you can then make your front page attractive. But by default, you'll just see the login site. So we're going to log in as a Moodle Cloud admin. And now remember, we've made our course Basic English. There's that swan image that we added. Depending on how many um, courses you have, you might see images on your front page. You might not actually want this display anyway. So we're going to look at how we can change the front page display and how we can change its name from my Moodle site. So of course, we need to go to site administration and scroll all the way down. And if you think, oh, that's too much effort, just type front page in the search box and we get to front page settings. And remember on a Moodle Cloud site, these are for when you're logged in. If we go to front page settings, the first thing that we want to do is to change the full site name and the short name to something that's meaningful to us instead of my new Moodle site. Uh, ours is just called Cloud Control Central. We have a site called Mount Orange. It could be any name that is appropriate to you, to your organization, or it could just be Mr. Jones's Moodle site, whatever. You can give it a summary and um, beware though that that doesn't appear in the central area of your front page is a different way of doing that. This summary would only normally be seen in a side block. And as you scroll down, you've got various boxes which allow you to decide what you want to show on that logged in front page. For example, a list of available courses. That's well and good, um, but what about these rather, well, I actually like the circles very much, but what if you wanted a different background? What if you wanted different colors? Well, for that, we need to go back to site administration and we need to look in the appearance tab and everything that's going to help you make your front page and your site look attractive is found in the appearance tab. And this is where we can see themes. So themes are the background or the skin of a Moodle site. And as a Moodle cloud admin, you've got extra themes to what everyone else has when they first have Moodle. So to Boost and Classic are the two standard themes that everyone gets when you have a Moodle site. In Moodle Cloud, you also have Moodle Cloud and School. We're using the Boost theme. That's the one that comes as normal. That's the one with the navigation drawer here. So we'll explore that one. You can change themes from clicking Theme Selector, but each of these themes has its own page where you can change its settings. And if, for example, if we click into the Boost theme settings page, there's a lot that we can do. So for example, I'm sorry I've made this small. I've made it small because I wanted to get a lot into it. Um, we can, for example, you can see some upload box here, background image. So if we uploaded an image here, then this, these circles would change 
to like the blue we had in an example site I showed you, or anything you want, you can play around with that. You can also change colors from this color scheme here. So you have text and links of a different color. Um, if you understand about theme presets and we're getting advanced here, which is a, a marker to me to start um, winding down. If you understand about presets, then you can go to, and you'll click on the links, to an area we have with some example boost presets or theme presets, which you can use and adapt. Even better, if you understand a bit about coding, can you see where it says advanced settings? If you click there, you can add some extra coding to customize it even more. But we are just getting started with Moodle Cloud Admin. So we're not going to go down the road of advanced settings for themes. Instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to finish off by suggesting where you can get help with Moodle. And then in the last few minutes, answer any other questions and so on. So the benefits of the Moodle community is that it's global and it's full of free help. And even with Moodle Cloud Site, there's lots of free help. So first of all, if you want to know more about Moodle Admin Basics, and this isn't only for Moodle Cloud, this is for all Moodle sites, go to learn.moodle.org because there we have a free MOOC or a free online course all about Moodle Admin Basics, and you'll learn much more than we can do in this short hour. Okay, that's always available. Um, there's Moodle, there's learn.moodle.org. We also have a, a, a MOOC for teachers, but that's for tomorrow. Then, if you want free support, if you have a question, uh, go to our Moodle.org community forums, and I'll show you the link there. And we have um, forums in different languages, um, and also we have documentation in many languages, and we have some admin basics documentation as well. So all of this is free, and you're very welcome to go and join and ask your questions. This is Moodle.org, and you see where my, uh, my hand there, community forums. When you click community forums, that will take you to a list of languages and you can choose your language and engage with that. And literally it's some people's hobby, just answering questions, particularly for new Moodle admins. If you think this is good, but I don't really know what a course looks like. I don't understand the, best, the ways of setting it up. Why not go to our Mount Orange school demo site? This is a demonstration site that's its link there, and it's set up as a school of 8 to 18, but that doesn't actually matter because everything it uses applies to any kind of learning or training situation. And you can log in as a manager or a teacher or a student and try everything, delete everything, and then every hour on the hour, it's reset. So you don't need to have any concerns about breaking anything because we've got a hidden site somewhere in cyberspace that will replace it back to normal at the end of the hour. In fact, if you wanted to try this, it's always better to try it at about five past or 10 past the hour before other people around the world have tried. So do try that. And if again, if you want inspiration, then um, we have archive.moodle.net is the link to a site where, for example, you can get some theme presets if you want to try those under the free content. And as Martin mentioned in his keynote, we are hoping that very soon Moodle.net, uh, Moodle.net will be the uh, place to go for connecting with other uh, Moodle admins or Moodle users and so on. So that was quite quick, but uh, we can add the links. In fact, Helen has already added some of these links into our course as it is. So I'm going to stop there and I'm hoping that Helen will join me now. We've We've uh, a few minutes left and to ensure that we finish before the end as well, just to uh, see how you found it and if you have any questions we can answer. And uh, my cat has finally decided he wants to go out, so I'm just going to let him out. Well, thank you very much, Mary, for your presentation. I think you must have answered lots of questions as you were going through because 
I checked the, the forum and there's no new questions there, but there was just one question from before your session uh, from Tony. And Tony asks, can anyone log into Moodle Cloud, i.e. is it the same as we would have logged in for the Moodle Moot site? Well, everyone has their own Moodle Cloud site, really, uh, which is cool. So uh, you have your own login to your own Moodle Cloud site, so it's quite secure and safe for you. Yeah, And um, it is a different login from, for example, the login that you might have for um, this Moodle, this Moodle Moot Global, or a different login for if you go and join Moodle.org and join our community there. Uh, I hope that clarifies it. I do hope if you haven't got a Moodle Cloud site that you go and try it. If, even if you try the free trial, um, which is great for giving you some experience. Okay, any more questions? You're very welcome to ask them if you're in our big blue button room and we can read out the questions for those on the, watching on the live stream. Otherwise, feel free to ask the questions in the forum discussion. Uh, even afterwards as well. Okay, Emily is asking, how are desired plugins installed? Oh, do you want me to answer that? Do you want me to answer that or are you going to answer it? Sorry, you want me to answer? I thought we could, I thought we could alternate. Oh, like. oh, yeah. yeah, okay, alternate, my turn. Uh, well, uh, with Moodle Cloud, one of the restrictions, because you're getting the site uh, hosted for you, is that you can't install extra plugins. So if you have extra plugins that you really want to use on your Moodle site, the answer is, to go to a Moodle partner and ask them to help you with hosting or another alternative is you could organize hosting yourself if you were very technical. Uh, what is good to know though is that Moodle Cloud does include some very very useful plugins in it which aren't standard and um, we particularly like one called Group Choice for example and there's a, a retro quiz Space Invaders game. Th these are these are part of Moodle, uh, Moodle for School paid sites, and they're very good, and a few other um, plugins as well. Thanks, Mary. Um, so we have another question from Neville uh, saying, I'm a Moodle user, but there are lots of other teachers using Google Classroom. What would you say to teachers to help them consider converting to Moodle from Google Classroom? Um, I would say that, uh, well, I mean, there are a lot of people who have issues with, with, with the behemoth that is Google and with privacy and giving your identity and your soul to Google, whereas with Moodle it's completely different, your data is yours. Uh, I would suggest that they get a, a basic um, free trial Moodle Cloud site as an individual because it gives them so much more um, possibilities than Google Classroom. I know Google Classroom is quite straightforward to begin with, but there's a lot less you can do with it. And we do hope that uh, people will join us not only tomorrow, but on Thursday and Friday when we show you all of the possibilities of Moodle. We're very, very keen that uh, people who are not familiar with Moodle um, understand how to use it, like with this session, for example, which will go on YouTube and anyone can watch it and get started quickly with Moodle or with our two MOOCs on Learn Moodle, because your, your data is better, it's better for your students, uh, and there's more things that you can do with it, basically. And I think Kelly's agreeing with me there. I would consider the privacy of Google. Thanks, Mary. Um, uh, Ayanella, if that's how you say your name, pretty name there, saying, hello, what about games on Moodle? Well, there's lots of possibilities with games on Moodle and gamification when you when you get into it. And yeah, I'd really encourage that you come along to other sessions to learn more about games in Moodle. Yes, and if you have a Moodle for School site, as I said, 
there is something called Quiz Venture, which is a, a built-in game that you can use with quiz questions. So it's a, a learning game as well. Um, and um, there are other ways of playing games in Moodle. Whether that's a good idea or not depends on your learners. But yeah, there's lots of op options. So, oh, uh, Monica's asking, what is the time limit for recording sessions on Big Blue Button, and how many times are the records available in Moodle Cloud? Um, I think I think once you've recorded something in Big Blue Button, um, and it's uh, it's available on your on your course for you to see as many times as you want to. I'm not sure about the time limit because Big Blue Button is an example of a plugin that comes with Moodle Cloud, Moodle for School. So it's not part of Moodle, so we're not uh, as as uh, familiar with it as we are with Moodle. Um, I think we'll we'll finish in a few minutes because Helen and I need to be in another room uh, on the hour. Actually, uh, yeah. I, yeah. Just uh, try and finish up the last couple of questions, though remember, if we didn't have a chance to answer your question, or if you have any questions after the session, which can be likely, then feel free to post in our forum. Uh, Emily was just saying, would we see what games are installed if we can see the plugin list? That's right, on your site as, a, as an admin, if you've got Moodle for School, you can see the the plugins that, that are installed, including the one that Mary mentioned about the quiz quiz venture, I think it's called. That's right, yes. Um, and is that the answer to Eileen's question? What was the name of the activity that you can use with Moodle Quiz? Maybe yeah. that was quiz venture. <laughs> ah, and Kelly has uh, just posted a good link. Unfortunately, um, we can't share that link with people who are watching the live stream. So do post in the forum if you have any questions, because that's a really great place for sharing links. And as Mary mentioned in our in our course area for this uh, workshop, we've also uh, added more links for um, uh, help, helpful resources and places you can go. I've also added a link which I will add in our course which is a link to the uh, which shows you the plugins available on Moodle Cloud and um, if you expand uh, where it says plugins you'll be able to see uh, quiz venture and other plugins which Moodle Cloud Moodle for School users have so I think we'll uh, uh, <laughs> so thank you very much everyone for joining us in this workshop and a big thank you to Mary for your presentation and we hope it's helped you to to get into the idea of uh, Moodle Cloud admins. Thank you.